got Big Torrin in the building. I'm tired with the waves. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Yeah, we appreciate you coming out, man. Yes, and I'm actually glad to be here and, you know, connecting with new opportunity and new ventures in the area. Definitely. Expanding. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Or, so, yeah, you from out here? Yes, I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. Yeah, Pop Place area. Okay. Woo, woo. Small. Yeah. Or, so, yeah, we'll get right into it. Who's okay. uh, Big Torn? Who are you? Well, Big Torn. I am Torin Perkett. Tor Ren stands for strong willed and not easily persuaded. Ren means compassionate for Orion and a warrior. So uh, my mom told me that then in eighth grade, my homegirl named Marsha, she was calling me Big Torin. I was just Torin. And I was like, why are you calling me that? She's like, that's your name, man. So it was the end of the school year in eighth grade, and she said, Big Torin. I was like, you know what, Marsha? I'm going to go with that. And, and from eighth grade and up, that's I've been bit torn, but before that I was just torn. So ninth grade when I got to Maury, I introduced myself as Bit Torrent. Yep. Then tenth grade, I heard uh a song by Slim Thug and a bit boss of the north and I felt his energy so hard and I was like, Yo, I'm bit torn a boss because I'm gonna be my own boss and I've been right. using that name since tenth grade. So bit torn a yep. boss and yeah, that's okay. what it is. So yeah, you went way back to eighth grade. Um, how long you been doing music? The first time I did music and made a beat was in seventh grade with my brother. He was in ninth grade. We made a beat. My dad had a keyboard, and that was the intro to us making a beat. We made a beat. I went to school the next day. Had a CD. So we had we had a keyboard. It's old school back in the day. Just to give a that story. Right. I had a CD. Uh, you had to make it. Put it in a floppy disk, put it in a computer, upload it, wow. transfer it to the CD, then play it on the CD player. That's old school stuff back in the day. Yeah. And I let anybody who wanted to hear it, I said, yo, check this out. And everybody that heard it was like, yo, you my next beat maker. You, yo, we got to make a song. And that's that's when I started making beats. That was the intro of it. Dope. And that yeah. was way back in middle school. Yep, seventh grade. Wow. Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. So, yeah, is that when you really found out you wanted to pursue music and producing? Um, That was more so the intro of letting me know that it's there, it's creative, it's fun. I was in high school, leading out of, leading out of high school, going to college when I knew for sure that I wanted to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Twelfth sure. grade, going, coming back from freshman year of college, actually. Okay. Yeah. Or so do you think that your music um still has that same flavor as it did back then or how have you evolved? Yes. My music has become diverse. I always listen to multiple genres of music. Mm -hmm. And from there I would always try different things and my music would just sound funny because I wasn't skillful. I was just trying my creative thoughts and just letting it out. As I kept being disciplined, consistent, and just practicing, it formulated into my own sound of how I orchestrate music. So now it is the same, but just more skillful. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I want to go back a little bit. Um, you know, I've done my research. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, I see you're a producer, pianist, film composer, performer music director, which one of those is your favorite? Do you like enjoy the most? Yes, okay. For the people out there who believe in the astrology and astrological signs and stuff, I am a Gemini. And what I have learned is that I have zones and time periods and seasons when I'm in it. So. Now, if I'm making, when I say film composing, I'm doing film composing right now. I just did a documentary of music. 
I'm in that zone. So I love it just as much when I'm performing. So I think it all balanced out. Each one of them I love. I'm passionate about it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like your kids. It's like I can't pick one. It's like I love each and every one of y'all the same. Yeah, this or, this this is what I was led to, my destiny. Oh, oh. So, yeah, what was that first moment you getting into music, like your first, very first introduction? Ooh, well, I was in chorus in middle school and high school. And in high school, shout out to Miss Jasper, my chorus teacher, made it real good. She made chorus real fun for us. And she would let us do choreography, make it up on our own. She would let us become leaders. Most um, teachers don't let us do that. Right. And she would let us be our own leaders. And we would, chorus back in the day was just little, it was kind of corny at Maury a little bit. Then when we came and started adding more flavor, people came out. So that was like our, our true saying like, yo, we can really do this. Cause nobody used to come to the chorus concerts. We started promoting around the school. Then nice. the concerts got packed. It'd be like a night, like, yo, everybody came to see us. That was the intro of saying, yo, that we're going to keep doing this. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll fast forward to the future. Um, uh -huh. Do a little time jump mm -hmm. right now with the groovement. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the same thing. You have, you know, group members chorus. But uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, the groovement, the band that you're in. Yes, the groovement. Shout out to the groovement. Whoop. Um, I love the groovement. They are my brothers and my friends, man. They are I met Billy, uh, middle school. He we knew each other. Me and him started doing music together. We had a band before, then we started doing our own thing, coming back together. Billy was like, yo, we need he had a hashtag saying join the groovement. And one day I was like, he me and him was already performing together, and I was like, yo, that's the name, the Groovement, the wow. band. So we we started using that. Then we had our guitar player Blake. He was performing with us, and we was just performing and practicing. Then we was like, it was a guy named Chandler Nunley, and we was like, everybody was kind of on the wave of like, yo, he got he he would be a good fit. And we asked him, he came through, and that was the start of the groomer. And it nice. won't it won't long. It won't long like we was practicing a whole lot. It was just like we performed and then it just rose from there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you all perform together? Do you all have projects? How does that uh, how do you all manifest your music and come together? Right now we have been performing for the last few years. That has been something that's been lucrative to not be something that was like oh we just doing it for exposure it it really can it really helps us and say all right we could pay this um we are getting more into the digital aspect of recording now with band it's it's a it's a lot you got to practice then you got to have the equipment if you ain't got the equipment you can't record so we're in the as uh, aspect we got recordings right now and Everybody has their, their business part, right, as far as the music. So that's one thing that our band really instill is the business aspect as far as, like, being signed up, making sure our, we have a publishing, and making sure we have contracts, you know, all those things. So, right. yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, definitely. I feel like yeah. that's um, a piece that we don't talk about enough. Mm -hmm. We talk about the talent. We talk about the music, but in terms of, economics the business contracts mm -hmm. yes you know that would be something that um you know a lot of people need mm -hmm. they want to pursue yes yeah they do and another thing you mentioned is uh people playing their part mm -hmm. having their own sections like y'all coming together working unison but i'm yes. gonna ask you about you mm -hmm. and uh, your part as a producer so what is your duty you feel like as a producer as a producer i produce i give a product Sometimes it can be a melody uh, mm -hmm. in my head and say, yo, let's try this out. Or I have a beat. More than likely, it's more than just, a, it's just a beat sometimes. And with that is, I'll have times where I have a hook already laid out. Hey, 
let's get this done. And producers, don't be afraid to let it be known what you have in mind and what you need to say to the artist because you are a valuable and the vital pulse and heartbeat of this song and selection. So I wanted to put that out there to the producers. Yes. Dope, dope. Yeah, I feel like um, right now, just music in general, it's the age of the producer. You know, people are getting more hip to like the melodies and the rhythms of the song. And, um, you know, do you feel that producers get enough recognition? I feel like if your business is on point, you got all your paperwork, your copyright, your ISRC, your, I think they get the recognition through the residuals, if everything's on point, as far as an artist going out to an event and a beat playing and the artist rock the show so much and don't mention the producer, no, I don't think the producer gets enough recognition. Right. Yeah, I feel like 80% of music is the producer. Yes. I guess it really depends on what genre you're talking about, but, mm. you know, for most, you know, that whole rhythm and especially, like, right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tell us about any projects you have going on right now. Yes, I have a project going on with my man's It's The Concept. We got a record called I Got Soul, and it's on a platform of YouTube. We got a music video. Shout out to Who's Johnny Creative. Shout out to Glow Shines. We got a project called Goddess of the Water with a music video out on YouTube. Really dope. Shout out to Ashanti working on a whole Ashanti Brad working on a whole project with my production with Billy Mercury, my man Third Eye Rye, and it's other people and projects I got coming. So just for those who watching, you know, be on the lookout and stay connected to your scenery. You know, don't 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 go so far, don't go so far to where you can't reach nobody. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I told you about my research. I've yes. seen you do jam sessions. Yeah. Tell us about or tell the viewers what is a jam session and how has that helped influence your music? A jam session. So a jam session to me, and everybody has their own perspective, but a jam session to me is, okay, somebody hit me up on Instagram that I might not know and they see my stuff or vice versa. I've seen theirs. And... I say, hey, we should get up, like, might collab or something. The jam session is the first vibration, the first tone to let us know, yeah, we're going we gonna to really do something or we might not, you know. And a jam session is a therapeutic thing as well to release for creatives. You're hearing music and you just doing stuff on the spot. A jam, then it's a session. You might record it. And that, that's what made Kate a session. Okay. So, yeah. so um, that's real interesting. I've never heard it explained like that. So it's kind of like, you know, you're talking about basketball sports. It's like that first practice scrimmage, mm. you know. So yeah. Yeah. Smooth, smooth. Definitely. Yeah. So what else do you um like have going on in terms of your music? Do you only produce for other people or do you do like, your own music as well, like putting out beats and instrumentals or maybe even singing or rapping on. Yes, um, I produce for other people and I have music of my own as well. Okay. Um, I keep mentioning about the business part because to be instilled in that, I have released music before and it didn't get to where I wanted it to be. It might reach a few people, right. but I didn't know anything of it. So I got music uh, ready, stacked, and strategic plans, yeah. strategies, you know. The records that I'm having with other people as me being a producer, that's getting my name and building it more. So when it's time for me to release it, I got all these different waves and outlets and people I'm connected to. And it, it, it's going to be really good. Dope, dope. Gonna, yeah. So how do you feel about the um, Virginia music scene now? Oh, man. 
now, then, and forevermore, Virginia shall always rise. I believe that Virginia music scenery is thriving, it's pulsing, it's very live, it's very creative. People are on a, a, a understanding where they see that it's a possibility and the awareness is high in Virginia. And now you seeing people that you probably used to see at the open mics and different things making it. You see them getting platinum records, right. getting the RIAA. That means when you get an RIAA, you're considered gold or platinum and, or up. So that's yeah. and and these people, people from Virginia has always been like that. Yeah, definitely. So next thing is connecting with your brother man and your sister girl. I was gonna get into that collabs, yeah. And um, also family. Um, you got family from Virginia, and this is something that I I feel like we grow up in a commonwealth. We have one of the largest naval base stations in Virginia. I think it's the largest in the, in the nation. Mm. Yeah. We, or the world, one of those, yeah. If you hear that, okay, so that is the mecca port for naval ships and everything. So a lot of people that come through here is coming, going, but the mindset of Virginia is to work nine to five lawyer uh entertainment is kind of on the little back burner in the mentality of society yeah. so you got to be aware of how your your don't become a product of your environment if the product that you're trying to produce is not fitting you don't become that product you got to break out of that shell so i just wanted to put that out of there yeah for sure yeah, yeah. i appreciate you you know telling people that, telling the people that yeah. Word, small. Mm. So, yeah, tell us about what you got going on next, man. What can we... Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I have... I'm performing all this month. You're going to catch me at Open Mic on October 20th. I'm going to be the house band. You can find me on Facebook and IG. I'm going to be the house band for this Open Mic. And anybody that want to come, you should come on out. Like, really... Come show your talent and skill. Then the next thing after that is a feature Friday. Me, it's the concept, Ashanti Bragg, uh, Kayla Walker uh, at the venue on 35th. Shout out to the venue. Check out the venue. Oh. And another one, November 25th. I got Soul Party, Bit Torn, and it's the concept. 635 West 35th Street. The host is Ashanti Brad. DJ is DJ S. Dot. We're going to have vegan food meal prep, and it's going to be live, man. Nice. It's going to be good. Health is going to be promoting health food. It's going to be promoting knowledge and consciousness and awareness. So it's going to be good, man. It's going to okay. be real good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate you coming out, man. Mm, That's a yeah. great conversation. Yes. Talked a little bit about everything. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Um, I want to say to the viewers, use your self initiative. You have the full potential in yourself to make your dreams a reality. Then once your dreams come a reality, you have to maintain that reality is not you just living in it in one day you have the full potential to reach that maximum potential and once you reach that maintain it be fruitful and multiply because you are you have the god within you it's omniscient it's omnipresent you have the intuition put forth the effort be consistent discipline yourself and all will have its place for you, and it will be prosperous for you. That's what I want to end with. Definitely. We're just going to cut it right there. All right. We out.